let's take a moment to actually illustrate what, now that we have kind of some idea of what the metagame looks like, what the process of actually trying to build a sideboard with a plan is. Because I think sideboarding is probably, er, sideboarding is the hardest part of playing Magic. And building a sideboard is, by a very, very wide margin, the hardest thing to do in Magic, period. <laughs> but specifically when it comes to deck building. So this might actually be educational. No, what was I doing? All right, here we go. We were making a clone of this. So what I want to do is essentially... It's very easy to fall into a trap when building a sideboard of saying to yourself, okay, what matchups do I want to improve and what cards are good against those matchups? Do I want to improve my matchup against white, black, more? Yes, that is the matchup I am currently most concerned about. Thus, I should just throw the best card I can think of against white, black in my sideboard. It's very easy to think that. But that actually leads to building really bad sideboards because what happens is you start to just think that adding cards to the sideboard for a matchup that are good in that matchup improves the sideboard. And that doesn't work because you actually run out of space to put cards in. And so you get these really diminishing returns where you have something like Divine Smite that is better against white-black than Vanishing Verse. But by like kind of such a small margin that the marginal value of adding that card to your sideboard when you're essentially already at capacity for cards in that matchup gets really low. And so what you want to do when you're trying to design a sideboard instead is not think of what do I want my 60 card main deck to be and what do I want my 15 card sideboard to be. You should instead think what do I want my 60 card post board to be in matchup X, Y, and Z. So we're actually going to walk through that process since I can't figure out what other two cards to put in this sideboard. So, for starters, against white, black. We definitely don't want Parasitic Grasp. We definitely don't want Blood Chief's Thirst. We definitely don't want Path of Peril. We might want Meat Hook Massacre. We're okay with Vanishing Verse. Celestis is great. Soul Shatter isn't. Imrith is Oh, I'm removing cards from the sideboard. Okay. Oh, it, cool. <laughs> Lovely. It stuck to my mouse. That's why that was going weird. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> All right. Meat Hook Massacre, not great. Parasitic Gra- Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I lied. Meat Hook Massacre is actually kind of good against White Black. I can get into why, but it's one of the cards that I would less want to cut. It is on the table for cutting, but it's not great to cut. So three drops get cut, mostly because just having them play is kind of nice to gain life against them. Okay, so Imrith, Lolth, Sorin, Memory Deluge, Edgar, probably not as a three of, probably only as a two of. I, I'm not totally sure if Imrith is good. I'm not totally sure if Vanishing Verse is good. I'm not totally convinced Edgar's good, but I'm pretty convinced. So those are the cards that are the next marginal cuts where once I've brought in nine cards to replace the cards I know are bad, I can make the matchup better by replacing these cards, but at that point, the difference that I'm making by adding more cards starts to get lower because the, the value of these cards isn't as close to zero as the cards that we're taking out. So we definitely bring in Disdainful Stroke. We definitely bring in Divine Smite. We are probably happy to bring in Soren. I want to bring in Go Blanks. I want to bring in Kaya's. Which means with that plan, we're actually already at 60 cards playing Vanishing Verse and Imrith. So I can throw in two more Divine Smites. The result would probably be that I end up trimming two Vanishing Verse. That might be acceptable, but the marginal value is a little lower, so I 
think that I would want to see if there's some other matchup that I care about where I have the ability to bring in a card while cutting a bad card instead of cutting a card that's kind of already okay. We'll look at those next. So then next, I think I would want to look at aggro. I'm going to skip over mono white aggro because I feel like with parasitic grasps in that matchup, we're probably already totally fine. I know mono white, all I really want to do is take out Disdainful Stroke because every other card is great. And then we bring in Blood Chief's Thirst, Parasitic Grasp, Parasitic Grasp. And I could maybe, like, cut a Memory Deluge for a Sorin, probably. And we're set. So, like, if I'm cutting a Memory Deluge for a card, then I don't really have anything left to cut. <laughs> so I guess I actually did go through the whole process just very quickly because I know that matchup and have a sideboard for it. Um... So against green aggro and green red aggro. I can't really afford to bring in more parasitic grasps. I can bring in fading hope against the green decks. I can bring in blood chief's thirst. I don't really want to take out disdainful stroke. I do probably want to take out Soren. And then I guess I could take out, like, a Memory Deluge against a green deck. I could potentially even board up to a fourth Disdainful Stroke, but I probably don't need to. Maybe there's an argument between whether I want to play two Disdainful Stroke or four Memory Deluge. Two and four, or three and three. That would probably depend more on the opponent's exact list. Uh, so this is mono green, specifically, I should say. Green-red's actually a totally different story. So this would be mono green. Green red is different because I need to bring in two more parasitic grasps. Which I don't want to cut disdainful strokes there either, because they typically play a bunch of four drop chariot, Alana and Elena, and then often Goldspan Dragon or Ren and Seven, all of which Disdainful Stroke is excellent against. But if I'm at 62 cards against that matchup, and then I'm probably like trying to figure out what I should trim based on, in a tournament situation, access to the opponent's 75 card data, but in this situation on the ladder kind of just guessing, then I definitely don't need more cards for this matchup because I have nothing bad to take out at this point anyway. So not bringing it in this matchup either, or rather either of these. Okay, Storm the Festival piles are an interesting thing to consider. Small caveat here in that I haven't actually seen like any defined Storm in the Festival lists, and because the game plan of Storm in the Festival is to go so much taller, or so much later, I guess, than other decks, it tends to kind of be harder to define what a curve out from them looks like, and there's probably a lot more variation in how games play out and what their decks look like. But if I had to guess, I would say they're probably not aggressive, so I don't think I want Parasitic Grasp or Blood Chief's Thirst that much. Path of Peril and Soul Shatter are probably still okay, because generally Crash the Festival decks tend to play Chariot and Ren and Seven, which makes Path of Peril still good and Soul Shatter still fine. Soren could or could not be good, depending on what their aggression looks like, but most of the time, probably good. Similarly, Edgar's usually good against decks playing Ren and Seven and Chariot, just because the body's good against Chariot and the tokens tend to be good against giant non-trampling tokens. Imrith, probably not a card I'd be super excited about against a deck that was trying to go late and make giant Ren and Seven tokens. Where does Soren sideboard in mostly? So my thought was against smaller aggro decks, mono reddish kind of stuff, mono whitish kind of stuff, but it's possible that maybe those aren't popular enough to be worthwhile. I also, I don't know how much I like Soren in mirror matches right now. 
I was kind of thinking originally that it'd be card advantage in mid-range slash control slogs. But there's a lot of removal that hits it. I guess that stops it from hitting Walt or something, but I, I would board it in, I think, in any kind of mirror-ish match. Um, okay, but so against Storm the Festival decks, might cut the other Emirth as well. I would probably feel like I'd want to bring in a Fading Hope against a deck that was running Ren and Seven. I would definitely want to bring in Disdainful Stroke. I'd probably want to bring in Soren if I felt my opponent was going to be slow enough. I'd probably end up boarding in Go Blanks, I think. And then I could maybe make the argument that Kaio was worth bringing in. But... I think if I'm debating bringing in Kaio... I can't... <clears throat> I can't really think of anything that I'd want to bring in additionally here. Besides maybe... Maybe Cutting Meat Hook Massacre if they're truly late gamey. And then bring in Kaya instead, but I'm not totally sold on that. Maybe Negate, I guess, against decks that seemed to be primarily on Chariot Ren plans. So that is kind of a point in favor for Negate, I guess? Hmm. All right, so against blue-red dragons, we got the Emirates, we got the Lolths. Dragons? I probably don't love Soren very much, which is the first matchup I've had to say that. I don't like Parasitic Grasp very much. I do like Soul Shatter, I do like Blood Chief's Thirst. So post-board, we have to envision a scenario where the opponent is on a plan that probably involves Goldspan Dragon and Smoldering Egg as the almost guaranteed cards, and then probably Malevolent Hermit, and maybe Suspicious Stowaway. That means I'm probably actually interested in Blood Chief's Thirst, possibly even interested in a third one because they do answer the malevolent hermits and stowaways and eggs we are definitely interested in disdainful stroke i'm probably interested in soaring chump blocking a goldspan dragon is kind of interesting but i don't think soaring's exciting Probably interested in Blood Chief's Thirst. I don't think I'm terribly interested in Fading Hope. I could see myself boarding in Go Blanks, especially if the opponent's on a Memory Deluge plan. In fact, I think I would probably want three, and I could probably get away with trimming a Meat Hook Massacre, because the only thing it's super excellent against anyway is the... Hermits, and I guess the Stowaways, but it's not good against Egg, and it's not really good against Goldspan Dragon. In fact, I could be convinced to cut Meat Hook Massacre number two for another removal spell if we had one. I don't think Fading Hope is good enough because the Is It matchups do tend to typically orient around card draw and who has the most card advantage. So if I were to play something like an Infernal Grasp, I would probably see myself bringing it in in that matchup. Yeah, I think so. I don't think it's worth playing Kaya. I think that's vulnerable to too many of their counter spells anyway. So we have four counter spells and six instant speed removal spells for the dragon. Okay, yeah. So point in favor of Infernal Grasp, I think that's the card I would most want to bring in against dragons here that I can think of. Low cost, instant speed, flexible interaction. It's probably the best thing I could be doing. So I suppose that leaves us with mirror matches or pseudo mirror matches to consider, in which case... I definitely don't want Parasitic Grasps, I definitely don't want Meat Hook Massacres, I definitely don't want Path of Peril. I don't think matchups... I don't think most mirror matchups have the board be wide enough for any of that to matter. This is not white-black matchups where the board wipes are actually kind of good. And admittedly, there are mirror matchups where 
not having board wipes to answer a bunch of Edgar tokens will be a problem. But I think at that point, if you've let the game snowball out of control that much, you're probably already losing. So I think we want Goblanks and Disdainful Stroke for sure against any deck that might theoretically be playing Memory Deluge. We probably want Kaya against every deck that could consider playing Edgar. We probably want Divine Smite against every deck that's playing Rolf, Edgar, and Sorin. In fact, Divine Smite probably even close to good enough against straight blue-black decks. Just because Sorin and Lolf are still things we don't mind removing with Divine Smite. Mystical Dispute. <laughs> That's from back in uh, Theros, right? I would be so excited if Mystical Dispute was a card I could play right now. But okay, so that gives us actually 60 cards already for the Mirror. And I'm also probably supposed to bring in Sorin as just a generic mid-range card. Even if I do think Behold might be better. So like at that point, we're already figuring out a card to cut in a control-ish mid-range mirror that isn't dead. Which, I don't know, maybe it'd be like a Vanishing Verse. Although Vanishing Verse against possible Holebreaker Horror is probably something I can't afford to cut. So, like, maybe it winds up being an Imrith instead, but, yeah, probably an Imrith. Because it's harder to get value out of immediately, especially against a deck that could be playing Vanishing Verse. So, that again, to me, says, I don't need more cards for this matchup, unless it was a card that was so stellar that it was worth, like, marginally improving over a Sorin, and I don't think that Behold actually is enough of an improvement over Sorin to be a super good use of this sideboard space. So, I suppose I could do something like board into more Lolfs in decks where we needed to be more defensive, or try to find some new card that I hadn't thought of before that's like a good 3-drop against a specific deck that we care about the matchup against. Hmm. I think a third Soul Shatter could be versatile as marginally better removal in a lot of matchups. I don't know that there are too many matchups I would want to play more Soul Shatters in. I guess Dragons would be one, but I think that's the only matchup I'd really want more Soul Shatters. There's not a lot of other matchups where Soul Shatter is like particularly exciting. Like Duress against Blue Red Dragons and any Control X you were into, I think it's better than Path of Peril, but I guess it depends on if they run a lot of two drops or not. Yeah, I think that generally the counter spells that I'm afraid of out of a dragon's deck are um, malevolent hermits mostly. I don't think duress fixes what I view as probably the concerning curve outs against that deck, or the ones that I am most concerned by. All right, so let, I guess let's take a look at what a sideboard plan against a blue-white control deck where we couldn't bring in Divine Smite would look like. I don't know what a blue-white control deck would look like, but we can try to make some educated guesses, which is to say probably want Disdainful Stroke, probably want Sorin, probably want Go Blanks. At that point, I don't need Divine Smites, and I don't need Kaya's, which actually does leave me with some extra room if we wound up playing against a... Oh, I messed up. Playing against a white-blue control deck. Whether a white-blue control deck exists is a different story, but... <laughs> okay, so we were trimming Blood Chief's Thirsts, trimming Parasitic Grasps, trimming Meat Hook Massacres, trimming Path of Perils bringing in Disdainful Strokes, bringing in Sorin, bringing in Go Blank. Actually, Edgar wouldn't even be stellar in those matchups. I guess we could play Kaya. That would be awful. All 
All right. I could be sold on the idea that that is a matchup where we really could use an extra card, and Suspicious Stowaway is not a terrible card to be playing in that case. So like, Katakaya, play two Stowaways. That's functional. All right. Lacking any better options, or at least not currently being able to think of any better options other than possibly wanting a Lolf, Number three in some matchups, which, based on the math from earlier, we didn't really need another Lolf in any of those matchups. Maybe there would be some matchups like against White Black where a third Lolf could be better than Amrith. But otherwise, I, I guess that's the plan then. I guess we're adding two suspicious stowaways. <laughs> 